Hi, everyone. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Um, take a, if you're watching uh, live, just get, take a comfortable seat. And if you're watching on the replay, take a comfortable seat too. Um, good to be here with you. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, I've needed a little bit of recharge time. I don't know about you, but winter, you know, cold, just feeling quite tired the last uh, month or so or more and really allowing myself, I've been allowing myself to do a little less physically. So I want to invite you to that practice as well to look and see where you might be pushing because this totally ties into what I'm talking about today, where you might be um, over committing yourself over scheduling yourself, um, particular, particularly now that the world has seemingly opened up um, and people are moving about freely. You may have been doing that for the last year or so, but I've, I've noticed a bit of an uptick in my own life um, in terms of I'm driving more places now, I'm, I'm having to be places or feeling obligated to be at certain functions. Uh, I've also put a little bit more into my schedule because I'm doing a little bit more music uh, rehearsing with a band and whatnot, but you might be feeling the same way. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're still really um, home home a lot. Uh, but there's also either way. There's also this experience that we all have of efforting with the mind. Um, and so I'm going to talk about that today. Talk about effortless effort in both mind and body. Uh, if you're with me, let's see if anyone's here today. If you're with me, just give a little shout out. You can do a little emoji. You can say hi. You can hit the love or the like button and let me know that you're here. I see Sharon might be here. I love, love seeing you, hearing you, Sharon. I'm glad you're here. So, but before we drop into this discussion, let's drop into our bodies. So let's get curious for the first few moments of just what kind of state we're actually in. Um, get curious about the, the state of your mind. Get curious about the feeling that's in your body. That's always a really good question to ask yourself when you are about to do a task um, or take something on is what state of mind am I living in right now? Um, what kind of thinking do I have going on about this particular thing that I'm about to do. And I'll get to that later. So let's get curious about where we are, what state of mind we're in, how we're feeling in the moment. Uh, you can do that by putting a hand here on the heart. You can also put one on your lower belly if you like. And let's take um, some deep and slow breaths. So breathe deeply into your nose. And let's breathe out slowly through the mouth really relaxing into your seat, into your chair. Two more, breathe in, breathe out. Let the shoulders come down, feel yourself kind of dropping into your body, your embodied experience. Once more, breathe in, breathe out. You're welcome to close your eyes, you're welcome to keep them open as you breathe. Let's do two more. Slow breaths. Allow yourself to get physically, to slow down physically. Slowing down will physically will also slow the mind down. They, you know, work in tandem, but Sometimes it's the other way around, but just feel what you're feeling. Just be a little curious. And invite, as I invited this morning in my morning class, invited my students to drop the mind into the breath, to bring your mind into communion with your breath once more. And let's see, let's see where we are here. Okay, I just have um, to turn this good. down because that's me talking. All right, um, so what do I mean by effortless effort? 
let me put it in a physical context. You might understand that um, more readily if I talk about it that way first. So in a yoga class or in a fitness class, I've noticed my experience has been um, that sometimes I'm just kind of overdoing it. You know, you're in a certain pose. Let's say you're in a, a warrior pose. You know, that's a big, it is a big strong pose. Arms are stretched out, legs are in that particular shape. If you don't know what I, what a warrior pose is, you can Google it, warrior two pose specifically. Um, so to be really simple about it, you know, your legs are working because they're holding you up, your feet are on the ground. So the power is all in your legs. You don't need your arms to do much other than this. But for some of us, we're carrying like a flavor of tension. Our shoulders are coming up toward our ears. We might be gritting our jaw. So anywhere that's like not needed, where um, less of your effort is needed, what you can do in warrior poses, you know, relax the shoulders. You don't need the jaw. <laughs> you don't even need your face. You can soften your eyes. We look at our, you know, front hand. If you're going this way, it would be your right hand in the pose. Um, that's one example physically. Like what's, what's excess? What's, what kind of tension are you bringing that you can just notice and let go of? And the body, of course, is, you know, like embodied practices are such a great metaphor for what's actually going on um, in our lives as well, right? Uh, so another, another physical um, example of this, I, I worked for a couple of years with an amazing um, movement teacher. She was a Feldenkrais master teacher, if you've ever done Feldenkrais, uh, and somatic work. It's very, very slow. It's very, very subtle. And I had to really, coming from a yoga background, which is like, like not all the time, but m many of the, especially the standing asana, the, the poses are strong. You're using kind of the, what I call the gross body, right? The gross musculature and the, the shape, making the shape with your arms, with your bones. Um, in these slower somatic practices, you're asked to slow way, way, way down and bring way, way, way less effort. So let's just pause there for a minute and think about um, being asked to do something like even a, a simple manual task, like emptying your dishwasher. There's a certain amount of effort to picking up the dish, using what's needed, you know, to hold your shoulders back and hold the dishes and carry them to your, your cupboard. Um, but you don't need, you know, if you're like this, carrying your dishes, this is a silly example, but you know, shoulders hunched to the ears, gritting the teeth, Sometimes that's how we are because we're in a hurry too, right? That we tend to bring in that flavor of tension and over efforting when we're in a hurry, um, kind of mindlessly moving through the world. So I'm giving you this example because it's something you can practice. It's, it's a mindfulness exercise too. You can practice like how much effort do I need to pick up a stack of dishes? How much effort do I need to tie my shoes? Um, and whatever is excess, whatever is extra, can I let that fall away? So practicing with like really real world mundane examples is a great way to kind of practice mindfulness. Um, another mindfulness practice actually is using your left hand or your, I should say your non-dominant hand. My dominant hand is my right hand. So when I use my left hand to like brush my teeth, say, it's such a weird experience. It's so awkward and it causes me to have to go slower and be more mindful because I, you know, I'm so used to doing it with my dominant hand. It's so easy. Um, you know, it's, it's challenging. And then by extension, I notice if I'm using my left hand to do something like brush my teeth, the right hand, the right side of my body, my dominant side that's so used to doing everything is really tense. I don't know if you've ever tried, uh, tell me if you've ever tried that, um, that experiment, that mindfulness experiment, using your non-dominant. Another example is eating. You can eat with your non-dominant hand. But when you do it, notice the dominant side of your body, which is habituated, right? It's familiar um, to that part of the body, to those muscles, to like, I, I'm used to doing the work. I'm going to do the work. And so when you when it's not needed, this side is not needed. I'm, you probably, I probably look backwards to you, but uh, when you're eating, say with a fork with your non-dominant hand, and the other hand is like, so just notice the other side wanting to effort, wanting to come into play. That's another practical way of putting this um, idea into practice. So 
Yeah, so that's the idea of effortless effort. Can you bring um, less of that flavor of tension? And I'm, I'm really speaking about right now physical tension because physical tension will have an effect on the mind and vice versa, mental tension will have an effect on the physical. Um, and that's also really where I'm going. It's really where I want to go. Um, so when you do notice that you're over efforting in your body, when you feel exhausted, like this is for those of us who, I think a lot of us tend to push too hard, but this is for those of us that really are um, in this habit of, of striving and pushing towards something and needing to, um, you know, see if it's all going to work out like the those of us who maybe have a flavor of control in our doing. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to take a breath with that. Can you start to notice and let go of the extra effort and the extra control? Not always easy to do, but what you can do because it's so habituated, it's such a habit for us, for a lot of us, what you can do is do that exercise I mentioned, the, the non-dominant doing eating. So eating is, is a great way, um, or you know, op trying to open something with just the non-dominant hand, uh, or brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth is another you know, just binary thing. It's either one hand or the other. So brushing your teeth with a non-dominant hand and relaxing in the activity, in this really simple mundane activity. Um, and let me go, let me circle back to the mind. So mental tension, the flavor of tension in the mind would be, I would say like for many of us overthinking, like just a lot of heavy thinking, right? Um, let me give you an example in my own life. I just saw for myself that in my own business, you know, this is, my business, leading, um, being a catalyst for women in one on one coaching and group coaching and movement classes. And I am at the helm of that. I really don't have anyone else working for me. Um, I have one other person. She's lovely and she does a lot of my graphics and she does a lot of beautiful things for me. Um, but I'm at the helm of most of it, um, which means beyond the teaching, I'm doing the marketing and um, the finances and all of that. There's no CFO, there's no CEO in my company. So much of my business life and my entrepreneuring, if we, shall we say, has been um, imbued with this flavor of tension, you know, got to get it done. Um, and, and some of that is driven by money, got to get the money in the bank, right? Um, and my, my, my coach, Grace, talks about that as pressure or as putting a gun to your head. Like, so that's another thing you can notice is how much pressure, internal pressure is going on in your mind. How much of a pressure cooker do you have in your mind? Um, one of the things, and one of the ways I put pressure on myself is to do things a certain way. Um, let me just say like consistency, like to, I have a rule with myself. I need to be more consistent or I need to put out this many emails per week. I've started to do that to myself. And I've noticed that that's actually not helpful. Um, that's like pointing the gun at, at my head and putting a lot of pressure on myself because what happens is I tend to freeze under that pressure. So rather than actually being consistent, the thing I'm aiming for, I'm not consistent at all. I have these big swings where I'm very present with, with um, my marketing and I'm sending out messages to people and I'm communicating or I'm not at all. You know, I've fallen off the cliff, I've fallen off the wagon and two weeks go by and you don't see me or hear from me. And there's no judgment, right? We're just being curious about all of this. There's no judgment. Um, I'm letting go of a lot of judgment of myself in that. But the thing to be seen is just that internal pressure. So how much internal pressure are you putting on yourself? And that's another place to apply effortless effort, right? When you have like a small cut on your finger, you don't put a tourniquet on your finger. You put a Band-Aid and probably like if it's a little cut, you put a little, little Band-Aid. <laughs> so 
So effortless effort is just finding the right size Band-Aid to uh, you know, seal the wound, stop the bleeding, and going about your day. Um, and when you find, we were just talking about the mind, but when you find the mind is over efforting, overthinking, fixing, trying to figure something out really, really, you know, you, I'm sure most of us has a, have the experience of like bearing down on something, wanting something to happen. Um, the best thing you can do in that moment is just to get lighter, is just to lighten up. See if you can find a way to physically relax. That's step one, right? Maybe practice the non-dominant idea with using a, a non-dominant hand to slow yourself down a little bit. So I hope this is making sense. Let me know if you have any comments, if you have any questions. That's kind of where I want to leave it today because I'm, I'm due to be on a call at noon. So I'm going to leave it and we'll do a little meditation now about an effortless effort meditation. So effortless effort, this actually, this phrase actually comes from meditation, at least a meditation practice that I'm currently doing and learning. Um, and what that means is like bringing only enough, only enough of yourself to the equation. Good. I'm so glad this fits for you, Sharon. Thank you for commenting. Yeah. Anybody else, if you're watching the replay, please feel free to drop a comment and tell me what you're hearing. Um, anytime I'm talking, anytime we're meditating, uh, the main idea or a couple of the main ideas for me is to help us just get curious, fall out of judgment, fall out of the judging mind and also get physically very um, relaxed. And so sometimes if you're listening, you might actually feel a little tired. If you're doing like a, you know, a gentle mindful listening and you're relaxing to what I'm saying or you're relaxing in the meditation. And that I, I wanna say also go with that, be tired, be relaxed, right? Let yourself, because we're so often in a busy, busy state. Um, and again, that flavor, we're often bringing an extra flavor of tension um, or, you know, I'm likening it to pulling your, not noticing that your shoulders have been up to your ears for the last hour when you've been on the computer. <laughs> that might be resonant for a lot of you, right? And then you suddenly, doorbell rings or phone rings or something, you suddenly go, oh my God, Whew, I've been sitting with my shoulders hunched up to my ears. Let me just take a pause. So Right? Shoulders up to ears is not a prerequisite for typing a good email to somebody. <laughs> we don't need the shoulders to be up or under ears. So again, that's the idea behind effortless effort in a physical context. Let's put it in this sort of sweet, go into a sweet flowing meditation and put it in the context of mind and body. Um, so just rest your hands wherever they're comfortable on your legs, in your lap. You can roll the shoulders a couple of times and just feel yourself releasing any weight, metaphorical weight off your back and also from your mind. So breathe in your nose, breathe out your nose or your mouth. And on the in breaths, just a nice soothing, soothe your mind. On the out breath, imagine that you're clearing tension from the mind and the body, that you're breathing it out on the exhale. And you can begin to close your eyes if that's comfortable or simply rest your gaze down to the floor, but keep your chin level. One more shoulder roll. Shoulders relax down your back. Find your comfortable seat. And we'll start with something I'm just learning in the meditation practice I'm doing. Softening and opening the six gates. First, just check in with your breath. Notice your breath simply coming and going. No need to fix anything. No need to change anything. Slip into a state of relaxation, so much so that you are being breathed. You're not doing the breathing. You can kind of remove yourself from that effort. 
So effortless, let's call it a dance rather than an effort, effortless dance with the breath. Relax your face and your jaw, and we'll go back to the six gates. The six gates are the feet, soles of the feet, palms of the hands, corners of the eyes, the ears, the tongue in your mouth and your pelvic floor. As you rest here in your seat or lying down on the floor, relax and soften the soles of your feet. Soften the palms of your hands. Just imagine a soft, soothing, relaxing sensation in the soles and the palms. And then imagine the eyes, the inner and outer corners of both eyes, melting, softening like butter. And then in the ears and around the ears, the ears getting soft. Feel the tongue softening and spreading in the floor of your mouth. And then lastly, your pelvic floor between, visualize the space between your pubic bone and tailbone and the two sits bones, like a diamond, like a diamond shaped trampoline. Relax that, that area, that diamond. And for the next four to five minutes, we're just gonna rest, let our mind rest in our breath. Notice when that switch within you gets flipped, that switch that wants to do something, that wants to take over. It could be noise in the mind. It could be a feeling of needing to get up off the cushion or the floor and go do something. Like it could be a feeling of inner urgency. It could be checking off all the things, the to-dos in your head that you need to get done today. And just notice whatever it is for you, whatever kind of effort comes through when that efforting switch gets flipped. Simply respond by softening back into your seat, softening the soles, palms, eyes, ears, tongue, and pelvic floor, and simply relaxing in yourself, just relaxing. So much less of you is needed, so much less of your effort. The only aim, if there is any aim, is to get quiet. To feel your body letting go of any tension it might be holding. To feel your mind releasing tension out through the breath. Just enjoy, enjoy this moment, these moments of rest and respite. As you simply sit and just allow yourself to be.
if there is a way to help our elevator of consciousness, you've heard me talk about this a bit, the elevator of consciousness is always rising and sometimes it's falling. When it's rising, when we're at a higher level of consciousness, we can do better, we can see better, we can see more clearly. <clears throat> And there's really nothing to be done. It does, our elevator drops when we're tired, when we're overextended, when we're over-efforting. And to bring it back up, this is really it. The only thing to be done is physically relax your body, mentally quiet your mind as best you can. So that you allow the elevator consciousness to come back gently and gracefully on its own to rise. Intuitively allow yourself to breathe five more conscious breaths without any counting, just feeling, feeling the breath come and go. Let your mind relax with your breath. When you sense you've done five conscious, relaxed breaths, keep breathing and bring your hands over your heart, one on top of the other. Enjoy a nice deep breath in the heart. Exhale it slowly and completely. When you get to the bottom of the exhale, even just giving a little extra push, a gentle push to release all the exhale. Do that one more time, breathe in through the nose. Long exhale through the mouth. Easing into your seat and your body. Bow your head. And ease into your day, ease back into your day, please. Drink some water, walk mindfully to your next place that you need to be, just giving yourself an experience of effortless effort. And again, so much less of your effort is needed. You'll accomplish more by efforting less. I hope that this was helpful and it was a pleasure to be with you today. Namaste.